I can't visualize infinity. If it's true that I have an infinite nature inside of me, how is it that I can't see it, that I can't visual, visualize it? That's a good point. Well, the reason is, is that most people try to envision infinitely large when they, try, when they think of infinity. So that is limited by your senses because it's external to you. However, here we see that through infinite division we can generate singularity, a link to all other things. So when you try to visualize infinity, you might want to turn your senses inwards and go towards the infinitely small that's contained in all of your atoms and all of your cells. Well, just happens that all of the masters that have walked the earth have been trying to tell people about turning their senses inward through meditation, prayers, and so on to connect with their infinite nature. The Buddha, Jesus, all these people said the temple of heaven is within you and within everything. That's the description of a fractal. So you see, already, this is a key to understanding your nature and your potential. How many times in the year do you turn your senses inward and connect with your infinite nature? And so, I was really excited about this because it seemed to say as well that the universe would be expanding and contracting. Right? If everything goes towards infinity at the center of all atoms, then the universe is contracting as much as it expands. And I could see how the external part of my existence is the expansive part, and the internal part of my existence is the contractive part. And I start to think that there must be a balance between the expansion of the universe and the contraction of the universe. And the contractive part of that balance equation is the part that generates. And the radiating part is the part that alienates, that destroys. Yet, all of our science, all of the knowledge, is based on the radiating part. Obviously, if the universe expands, then something is contracting. And that dynamic would be a feedback, right? Expand, contract, expand, contract. And it would have a very specific topological structure, meaning it would look in a very specific way. It would have very specific dynamics for things to be able to expand and then contract and so on. So, you know, when you think about it, and I was thinking about it for years, if you radiate if you look at the universe, you find that everything in the universe radiates. What does it radiate in? In the vacuum. The vacuum of space. Well then, the vacuum cannot be thought of as empty, can it? Because no energy is lost no energy is gained. So if all the suns, all the stars, all the galaxy, all the black holes, everything we see radiates into the vacuum, then the vacuum must be full. 
full of energy. And it was clear to me that then the vacuum must be the contractive side of the event horizon, the contractive side of the structure of reality, the part we don't see. Why? Because it's contracting towards infinity, moving away from us. It appears to us as vacuum. One thing we know is that the atom is made out of 99.99999% uh, space. <laughs> and I went, oh, space. Mostly space. Everything you see, everything you touch, everything is mostly space, 99.99999%. That includes you. You are 99.99999% space. And I was like, wait a minute. That the universe is connected by a non-seen force, right? What would be the thing that would connect all things? space. That's the only thing that's everywhere. And that's the only thing that all energy is radiated into. So I start to think, maybe it's the exact contrary. Maybe the atom is just a result of a division in space. Aha! Like the fractal structure we just saw. Divisions of space to infinity. Now it starts to look a little different, doesn't it? Is your brain starting to hurt? That's okay if it does. It's normal. Don't panic. <laughs> It'll get better. But imagine you're doing music. You need silence to be able to cut it to make music, to make a beat. If you're making reality, you need space to define the reality in between. So space, reality could be just various resolution, right? Various division of space in a fractal structured vacuum. Well, basically, that if there is an expansive and a contractive part of the universe, the expansion part is what we see as reality, which is the radiating electromagnetic emission that we see. A star, a planet, an atom, all radiate energy. That's why we see it, right? And the contractive part that we don't see would be the vacuum energy curving, space-time curving into it, generating singularity, generating the gravitational field. And that feedback between the internal and the external and the internal and the external is what drives the dynamics of all of the forces of the universe, which reduces in this view to only two forces, gravity and electromagnetism, the feedback between the two. No need for the strong and weak force anymore. What I'm saying is that if you consider quarks and, and protons as small as uh, mini black holes, and then you calculate you know how black holes would have a gravitational field? If you calculate the gravitational fields for these mini black holes, then the gravity that these mini black holes generate is strong enough to hold the particles together.